Hey everyone and welcome to the Retro Channel and welcome to DOS Semba. Now, although I'm a big fan of original hardware, setting up a DOS machine can be quite tricky. You've got to consider graphics cards, sound cards, peripherals, your display, all that kind of thing. And it does involve time, money, knowledge, patience. Um, so if you're just looking at a quick way to fire up a DOS game with minimal fuss, um, chances are you can turn to your common household computer, which these days probably resembles something like this. Um, desktop PCs aren't as common as they used to be, and most people use a laptop as their main computer. Now, in this particular case, we're running a 64-bit version of Windows 10, which doesn't have any 16-bit support at all. So DOS is basically non-existent here. But there are programs out there that will emulate a DOS environment and the DOS hardware, and it can all be done with fairly minimal fuss. So let's take a look at how to set up DOSBox X. Now, the first thing we want to do is jump online and find DOSBox X. Now, this is a version of the open source DOSBox that's updated by Jonathan Campbell fairly regularly and it contains a lot of features that the vanilla DOSBox doesn't have. Uh, there's also versions for Linux, Mac OS, and even DOS itself. So jump online, download that, and we'll start installing it. So the install process is very simple. Um, you don't even really have to change any of the default settings. You can pretty much just run through and leave them all as is, unless you really want to change something. And once it's installed, it'll pop up with a little readme file, which you probably should have a look at. And once you've done that, we'll open up DOSBox X and we're immediately greeted with a command prompt and we're put into Z or Z drive. Now this is just an emulated drive that contains DOSBox's working files. Um, so there's nothing special there, but as you can see, once we try and change to C drive, uh, it will give us a warning that mounting C drive is not recommended. Basically what you're doing is giving DOSBox full access to your C drive. Um, in this case, we're going to say yes, because I'm just going to use DOSBox to make a directory on our C drive. And to keep it simple, we're just going to call it DOS. So now that we've created a DOS directory on our C drive, we need to tell DOSBox to automatically mount that drive every time it starts up. That way, DOSBox will be limited to only the things in that folder and it won't have access to anything outside of it. It basically won't be aware of anything outside that folder. That'll become the root C drive as far as DOSBox is concerned. So we'll jump into the configuration tool and edit the autoexec.bat file and just put a little command to mount C drive as C drive slash DOS. Go to C drive and then clear the screen. And while I'm in here, I do also like to change the rendering options um, to change the aspect ratio to true. DOSBox will automatically stretch the screen depending on what screen size you are currently set to on your computer. So I like to keep things fairly original um, and have the aspect set to the original four by three or, or five by four aspect ratio. And now once that's done, if we restart DOSBox, we'll see that uh, we automatically boot into C drive. And of course there's nothing there because we haven't found any games yet. Now you can look online for games. Obviously you should only download them if you own the original software. And I'll go into how you copy over your original software. Um, but for now, we're just gonna jump straight into some gaming and see how this thing performs. So one little thing I forgot to do with DOSBox before I fire up any games is to have it automatically boot into full screen, giving us the, um, the nearest possible DOS experience that we can expect on a modern PC. So in the configuration options for SDL, uh, there is an option to automatically boot into full screen. And once we save our configuration, next time we open up DOSBox again, it will automatically boot us into full screen. 
And then from there, we can take a look at our directory, which hopefully will have some games in it by now. And yeah, boot one of them up and see how it plays out. So starting off with Alley Cat, which came out in 1984 and is CGA based with PC speaker. Um, yeah, the gameplay works just fine. There's no speed up or slow down. Um, and yeah, PC speaker emulation and CGA seem to work just fine. So um, if you've never played Alley Cat before, it can be actually quite entertaining um, once you sort of get the hang of it. So yeah, a simple game and DOSBox handles it, no questions asked. So most games I threw at this played out just fine. Um, there were a few issues with some games, which I'll come back to in a minute. Um, but let's talk about how to bring over your original media, whether you want to copy it straight to your hard drive and access it from there, or if you want to um, run games off the actual media itself. Now for floppy disks, I did pick up a cheap USB powered floppy disk drive. So this is just plug and play and Windows will automatically recognize it as the A drive, um, just as you'd expect. And I also picked up a USB powered uh, CD-ROM drive as this, this laptop has no external drives whatsoever. So um, these are both fairly cheap and yeah, they're just plug and play. So you can take them anywhere. So for floppy disks, um, the easiest way is just to copy it straight over to your hard drive. If you specify a drive in DOSBox, it will automatically mount the floppy disk drive and give DOSBox access to it. So you can still run games directly off your, your floppy disk if you like, or in, you know, run the installer if that's what the game requires. 
CD-ROM drives, pretty much the same thing. You can tell DOSBox to automatically mount your CD-ROM drive by specifying D drive. You can also copy the media from your original CD-ROM onto your hard drive. And even with games like Carmageddon, which has uh, CD-based audio tracks, um, there is a way to bring those over and have them correctly play through DOSBox from your hard drive. So let's quickly have a look at how to do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is download ImageBurn, um, which is a piece of software that I haven't used in many years. I think it was originally created by the same guy who did DVD Decryptor, uh, which for anyone who was making legal backups of their DVDs back in the day will probably be familiar with that piece of software. Now, once we've got ImageBurn installed and loaded up, we're gonna create an image file from our disk. Uh, this will basically put out a bin and a Q file. Um, and I recommend specifying the file name before you start creating that image. If you create it first and then change the file name afterwards, it will break the link between the Q file and the bin file because the Q file actually references the bin file internally. So I'm just gonna call this one Karma and start the ripping process. Once it's ripped, um, we can throw it in our DOS directory. And once we jump back into DOSBox, we just need to tell it to mount these files as a disk. So to do that, we use the image mount command. Uh, we wanna specify that it's gonna be D drive and mount the Q file, not the bin file. And then there's a couple of options, dash T, ISO, and DOSBox will then treat that bin and Q file as a virtual D drive. So from there, we can run our installer or whatever we need to do. So once everything's installed, I'm gonna make a little batch file just to make booting into Carmageddon a little bit easier. Uh, so we'll use the edit command and again, I'm just going to type in image mount um, drive D karma.q dash T ISO. And to take it one step further, we're just going to specify the executable that we want it to run after mounting that and just save it as something simple. Let's say mount car. And of course, I forgot to call it dot bat. So we'll just rename mount car to mount car dot bat. And then once we run mount car, it will automatically mount our image Q file and boot us straight into the game. And now we've got full audio working. And as far as DOSBox and the game are concerned, we've got the original disc inserted, even though it's running off our hard drive. So all in all, most games worked flawlessly. Um, obviously, some of the setup that you would normally do in DOS, say specifying the sound card, you still need to do here. But because most of the sound cards are already emulated, there's no need to worry about finding original working hardware and trying to get it all installed. Um, DOSBox pretty much takes care of all that. There were a few games that I had issues with. Um, loading up stunts with the Roland sound driver uh, caused some weird slowdowns, but once I went back into the setup options and changed it to Sound Blaster, um, yeah, it worked just fine after that. Similar sort of thing happened with King's Quest VI. Um, I had the audio set to Sound Blaster, um, which caused some random stuttering on the voiceover during the game. But changing the audio option to Thunderboard solved that issue. So. Once again, you know, you might have to play around a little bit in order to get things working just right, but it's definitely a lot easier than trying to set up a proper DOS system from scratch. So it's not perfect, but it is an easy way to boot into whatever DOS game you like. Speaking of which, you can also boot DOS games from the context menu. So if you're browsing through a folder, uh, you can right click the executable and run with DOSBox X and that'll boot pretty much straight into that executable. So it makes it really easy. Once again, in the case of Carmageddon, we can just right click that mount car, run with DOSBox X and it will mount our Q and bin file 
and boot straight into the game. So very simple um, if you don't want to play around in the command line. Um, but again, that's kind of part of the fun. So totally up to you what you want to do. I did also try out some 3D FX games, um, but couldn't get them working properly. Um, as you can see in Carmageddon, I pretty much had a blank screen all the way up until the actual game started and then it was missing the heads up display. So I'm not sure if it's just something that I'm doing wrong. Um, I did download the end glide wrapper and also installed DOSBox 32-bit uh, version. Um, but yeah, it just wouldn't quite work. It was close, but not quite. Um, and a similar thing happened with GTA. I got into the game just fine, but again, there's no heads up display. So unless you've got a really good memory of what to do, um, it makes the game pretty impossible to play. It's not a big deal because the, the games work just fine in high res and high color mode. Uh, it's just the, the Voodoo 3D effects I couldn't get working. And yeah, like I said, it could be something simple that I've just missed. Um, but it wasn't a big deal for me. They're, I'm a lot more interested in some of the older stuff anyway. So that's about it. That's a simple way to get DOS games running on a modern PC uh, without worrying about trying to find the original hardware. Um, like I said, I'm a big fan of original hardware, but sometimes if you just want to fire up your favorite game, um, this is certainly a, a good option. So thanks for watching the Retro channel. Be sure to check out the other channels doing Dosember. There's an official Dosember playlist, uh, but you can also use the hashtag on YouTube to find other channels doing Dosember content. So be sure to check all those out and subscribe to them. So on that note, thanks for watching the Retro channel. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I've got some gaming to do.